Welcome to our online service. Thank you for logging on. As you are settling down, uh, let me just give us uh, a few announcements. First thing I want to say is about a community. St Paul's has got many strengths and one of our strengths is community. In fact, one of our aims and our visions is to grow community. And that's hard to do in times like this. So I want to encourage you um, to be picking up the phone and calling people. Uh, perhaps people that you, you wouldn't normally phone anyway. And a big thank you to those of you who have been doing that anyway, just off your own back and ringing around just to catch up and see how people are doing. But I want to encourage us all to, to take that responsibility onto ourselves. Also, to try and recreate that sense of community, or at least an aspect of it, we're going to have a coffee morning. Now, hopefully you've not missed it yet, but at midday on Sunday, we're going to have coffee time, just as we would after the service at the BSB. The way it will work is you will have had an email earlier in the week with a link, and you click on there, we'll go into a big Zoom meeting, we'll all gather together very briefly, and then we'll be dispersed into small groups just for a chance to chat and to catch up with one another, talk about kind of what the fun things you've been trying to do while in this lockdown. So let's be intentional about building community through this time as we are socially distant from one another. Also, serving is something that has as Christians, as believers, we, we want to do. We want to use the gifts that God has given us. And for some of those things, it's difficult in this time, but other things are carrying on. So again, a big thank you to those who are adapting and changing the way that you are serving this community. I wonder if there is any budding video editors out there, anyone who's got the technology or the skills uh, to help us to pull these two services and other things together. A big thank you to Paul Brooks who has been helping out with that. But I'd like to build a team um, to, to do this. So if that's you, then please do get in touch. Next week or this week is the most poignant and important and special week of the church year. And we do not want that to pass us by. So let me tell you how we're going to try and journey together through that week. Uh, each day we'll have devotionals that we'll put up through social media and probably on our website as well. Just journeying through Holy Week. Then on Monday, Thursday, we're going to send out something that you can do in your home, probably around a meal. Um, you can do it on your own or if you're not family, as a family together, just to mark that evening, that, that last supper. On Good Friday, we're going to have a service where we can all join together, an hour at the cross, looking at probably through the stations of the cross. And again, we'll use video conferencing, so we're not kind of um, on our own in our homes, but we can see other faces and be part of that together. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have services like this, a big celebration, but also we'll have moments where, again, we can gather together, a bit like the coffee time that we're trying uh, on Sunday and just to celebrate and be together on the greatest day in history. Let's not let this week pass us by. Let's be intentional. Let's engage with God. That's enough now. Let's uh, settle down and begin our service. Hi, welcome. So today it's Palm Sunday and I'm really glad that you and your family could come and join us today. Today is the day when we read about Jesus arriving on a donkey into Jerusalem. The people in Jerusalem start getting really excited and they start shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna! And the translation of that means to save or rescue. The people were so excited to see Jesus. They knew he's come to save them. They didn't know exactly how that was going to happen or, or why, really. And Nathan will talk a little bit more about that later on. Now, we can get excited about G meeting with Jesus right now. We don't tend to use words like Hosanna so much anymore, but we do praise our amazing King Jesus. So let's think, as we start our sung worship together about um, ways that Jesus is even better than even the most incredible superhero. He's better than any king, any superhero. So let's worship him right now. He's the one who makes the sun. 
worship God in a different way, not just with our singing like we've just done, but we're going to be thinking about words that describe him. A bit like we did two weeks ago and we thought about A down to Z, a different word for each one that describes who God is or what he's like. Well today they might help you to be thinking because you're going to take something, maybe a soft ball or something you can throw to one another in a circle or next to each other if there's only two of you and something like a ball of socks, not, not stinky old ones, but ones that are nice and fresh and clean. And as you throw it to somebody, when they catch it, they have to think of a word like amazing or wonderful, or maybe it's some way that God makes you feel. God, you make me feel safe. Or something you want to say to God, like, God, I love you. So have a couple of minutes, just together as a family, worshipping him in this way. you came up with loads of fantastic ways that we could describe God and in that way we could praise him and remember who he is. So now in a minute you're going to watch a video and I just wanted to warn you that later on in the service I'm going to give you a challenge. You're going to be doing something creative and you'll need to know the story really quite well so watch really really carefully to this video about Palm Sunday. The story of Easter, the triumphal entry. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. 
He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. What a great and joyful and celebratory story that is of Jesus the King, the crowds cheering him and, and, and encouraging him on. There's so much happiness and joy surrounding Jesus at that time. But we know, of course, that it doesn't last. Again, just like other weeks, if you want to go a bit deeper into these topics, then perhaps later on you want to, to look at the 1030 series where Sarah Jane will be unpacking this for us in deeper ways than I'm going to now. But I want to look at three of the, the symbols uh, within this incredible story. It's brilliant. And one of the things that captivates my mind about the story of Jesus' triumphal entry, uh, Palm Sunday, is, is that sense of celebration and adoration and worship uh, as Jesus as, as a king. And the reason it grabs me is because that is actually what's happening right now. Jesus is the King and he is worshipped and adored by us and all the saints, all the people who have gone before us who are now with him in eternity and we get a glimpse of what is waiting for us. But Jesus rides in on a donkey. You know, you might expect a king who's to be celebrating a daughter like that to come in like a big warrior horse, but he comes on a donkey. The donkey is a sign of peace. That Jesus is a king. The crowd don't quite know what they mean by calling him a king, by their expectancy, but he is a king. And his coming on the donkey reminds us that actually his kingdom is not one of force or brutality or forcing people to do what they don't want to do, but it's one of peace, one of love and one of calm. And again, that gives us a glimpse of what his kingdom that is celebrated now is like. He is a king of peace. Another major thing that stands out from the story is, is the palm branches. It's a sign of victory, waving those down. Normally, as I've just said, a king, after a great warrior, after a great battle, would come in on a big horse and then wave those palm branches for victory. You've won the battle. You've defeated the enemy. It's a bit bizarre that the crowd are waving these because they don't really know what Jesus has done. And they even... At the end of this week, when he dies and rises again, they still don't really understand the victory that he has won. But yet they know there's something special about him. They know there's something worth celebrating, being joyful about him. 
The third thing that I want to draw out is what they shout. They shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna um, is a word that's again difficult to translate, but I think the best we can do is kind of saves or rescues. They're shouting out that Jesus is going to save us. He's going to rescue us. Now again, of course, for us, that word rescue and saves has a completely different meaning from what they perhaps meant. They thought that Jesus was going to come in and kick out the Romans who were oppressing them and ruling them and, and weren't allowing them to live with the religious freedom perhaps they wanted to. And they were shouting, oh, Xanax has come to save us. But actually, he didn't do the things that they were expecting him to do. But he did save us and he has rescued us. That is the great news, the good news of Easter, that Jesus came to earth, that he lived amongst us, that as we move through this week, we will see that he is he's betrayed, he's let down, his friends disown him, and then he is mocked and killed on a cross. But then We'll see how he, he defeats death and he rises again so that all of us can follow him through on that journey and be forgiven. Because that's why Jesus died on the cross. And the remarkable thing about Jesus on this Palm Sunday is that he's riding through on this donkey as the crowds are celebrating him and cheering his name. But yet he, he probably knew what was coming just in a week's time. He probably knew that people would disown him that they would turn their chants from Hosanna, hooray, hooray, to crucify him, kill him, get rid of him. He would have known that people would have turned on him, but yet he continued to ride into Jerusalem. He continued to preach. He continued to love people, to show God's power and mercy and miracles. He continued to welcome people. He continued his mission of bringing God's love to the world so that we could be saved and rescued and be with God forever, even though he knew that we would turn our backs on him. That's the incredible thing about Jesus, is that despite what we've done, despite who we are, despite the times that we've let him down and turned away from him, he continues to journey with us. This week, as we approach Easter, the great celebration, let's journey through this week, but remind ourselves that we also need rescuing. We need saving. That Jesus had to come, die on the cross, so that all the sins, all our wrongdoings could be taken away. And let us be aware of our need to be rescued. We cannot do it on our own. Thank God that Jesus has rescued us. I didn't know it would be this hard I didn't think I could fall so far But here I am How did I stray so far?
normally when it's my turn to lead prayers I make sure first that I can see you all. Well today I'm picturing you in my mind's eye. Babies, children, teens, adults. I'm particularly thinking of those of you at home with small children or those of you at home alone. So while we pray to our Almighty Father Maybe at the same time have in mind a picture of one person or one family or your best friend. Let us pray for the church and for the world. When I say God of love, please respond with, hear our prayer. Father God, Christ our Saviour, we love you and we put our hope in you. You are always faithful. As the creator of all things and all people, we say, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. God of love, hear our prayer. As the king you came, our king, gentle and riding on a donkey. We're sorry, Lord, when we're very proud. We're sorry when someone needs a gentle and gracious approach and we're aggressive. We're sorry when we do not do things trusting in you and when we think of ourselves before we think of others. Please forgive us and help us to see in this new way of living how we can help others as they need. God of love, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you've called us by name and we are yours. We offer you our thanks for all the ways in which you provide for us. Friendship, family, homes, food. Your beautiful creations all around us and whether we're living in an apartment or a house in the country, we can see your sun and sky. We can feel the wind, hear the birds, hear others working. At this time of the coronavirus, we're thankful that we have the technology to allow us to all keep in contact, to laugh and talk, to pray and play. We're thankful for the creativity you give each one of us that allows us new ways to explore how to live as your people. Help us to balance all the responsibilities you give us, not to get frustrated or overwhelmed, but to remain thankful. We thank you for Nathan and for his incredible service to us over the last few weeks. Lord, you have lifted up this man for such a time as this, and we bless you for that. We're thankful for Helen as she takes on the role of administrator and for everything she brings to the team. And we thank you, Lord, that Dominic has been called to begin a time of preparation before he joins us as our new chaplain. We thank you for all those who continue to work to serve others, thinking of those in the countries we all come from, as well as here in Belgium. The list is endless. But today I want to thank you for teachers, for hospital and community and emergency workers postal and other delivery workers, the army, those working in hidden areas such as cyber security, transport logistics, homeschooling. Lord, protect them as they go about their work. Give them extra strength by your spirit and may they know your loving care. God of love, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the church community and for ourselves. Your church is universal. And as you know us, so you know your children everywhere. We pray for those who are now returning to countries they originally came from. Especially thinking of those returning to India, Pakistan, Eritrea, the Philippines and many others. We commit their treacherous and long journeys to you. We pray for their reception when they reach home, often places of poverty they left in order to earn money. By your miraculous power, Lord, will you work to stop the spread of the virus among crowded boats, refugee camps, 
in slum areas of towns and cities and where there is little or poor sanitation. Lord, will you stop now those who would exploit others at this time? Will you please soften their hearts and will you help aid and development workers find means to continue to intervene and to assist? Finally, Lord, protect us all from fear. We pray for those who've lost jobs or are now on furlough. Lord, will you ensure they receive the income they need as soon as they need it? We pray for those who are already sick and known to us those who are lonely and anxious. We pray for those anxious about schoolwork, exams they may no longer take, potential entry to university or loss of sports activities. Let's take a minute now to think of them and to name them. Lord, we pray for those who are bereaved and have to grieve alone, fearful of loneliness, sadness, overwhelming. Lord, will you comfort them by your spirit's presence? We have no words to express the pain that this must be. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him, so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God of love, hear our prayer. Let's join together in prayer with Christians around the world to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we've heard a lot about Palm Sunday today. Hopefully you can remember what happened. You could use your Bibles at home to go through it again or watch the video again if not. And then what we'd love you to do as a family right now is to take your toys or your Lego or just you as people and retell the story. Perhaps you're going to dramatise the reading with different people doing different voices. Perhaps you're going to use your Lego and you could take still shots and you could narrate it. Whatever you do, please, please, please share it so we can pass that around and for other people to see it. You can email it to Nathan or you could put it straight onto Facebook and tag St Paul's Church. We hope that today you have really encountered God, that you've understood more of who he is, Jesus our King, and that you'll be able to celebrate him. So before you go ahead and make those and share them, we're going to sing a song together. And before we do that, I'm just going to pray to finish off. Father God, we thank you so much that you came to this earth to save us. Lord God, we thank you that you are our King. Help us to love you more and to worship you in all that we do. In Jesus' name.